If you're watching this video when it airs, today marks the last day of 2021. It's a time for reflection. It's a time to look back on a year of fond memories and maybe remember that better times could be just around the corner. So today, I'm going to look back over the year and talk about some of my favorite Path of Exile builds in 2021. Many of these builds ranked among the strongest options playable at the time. Several still work, and several are no longer playable due to mechanical changes over the past year. These aren't necessarily the best five builds ever to exist in PoE. These aren't even necessarily the best five builds to exist in 2021. These are the five builds that I played that I had the most fun with, personally. Path of Exile is a game that's always changing. There's always going to be new builds to explore. At the same time, it's fun to look back and reminisce about the old times and the builds we can't really play anymore. I'm going to rank these five on the most subjective quality possible, which means my ranking can't possibly be wrong, and that is how much fun I had playing them. So I'm going to be using perfectly set in stone metrics like how likely I would be to play the build again, how enjoyable it was to play, how much the build annoyed me when I was playing it or when I was gearing it and fixing issues, or things like any content that I felt got in the way of a build or stuff that I couldn't really do. So obviously, the most fun build is objectively the best build to exist in Path of Exile 2021, and there's absolutely no one who's going to watch this video, miss the obvious sarcasm, and complain down in the comments below. If any of these builds do look interesting to you, there are going to be associated videos down in the description, and if you want to see the builds that I play in the future, be sure to sub to the channel, ring the notification bell, leave a like, and let me know in the comments your top 5 favorite builds of 2021. Starting with number 5, which is a dual entry for Bladefall Blade Blast. I played this a few times, and I had the most fun with two incredibly powerful variants. From 310 to 314, Blade Blast was one of the highest damage skills in Path of Exile, to the point where it was so easy to invest in defenses and still kill everything that you could become nearly unkillable. The first version I played was a Poison Assassin in Ritual League. I abused several mechanics including Self Poison with a Poison Sextant, Explode, Fortify via Hardened Scars, Fizz Taken as Ellie, and Max Res. As a result, I could breeze through 100% Delirious maps. The biggest thing that held me back was the fact that I sometimes moved too fast to control my character, and also if I put the wrong map in, I wasn't really going to notice if it was 100% Delirious Tier 16, or if it was a white Tier 1 map that I would forgotten to ALK, corrupted, and then somehow put in my map device. And this is where several things got broken. You no longer get Fortify for free from Hardened Scars. It's harder to get as much Fizz taken as Ellie. Although conversely, Max Res is much easier to get, and you could probably integrate armor into the build, so a defensive assassin is something you could play. And even if a boss did kill me, well, I'd get the last laugh, because they'd die from the accumulation of poison. The build was so successful that in 314, I had to play Blade Blast again. This time, instead of playing poison or fire conversion, I went Archmage. At this time, a lot of people were playing it on Raider, a choice that I still find kind of confusing, as Necromancer is the true Archmage overlord of Path of Exile. Bladefall Bladeblast Archmage Necromancer was even tankier than the Assassin. I could run RF without my health or mana moving because Essence Glutton is nothing short of amazing. Both of these builds completely broke and trivialized the game, the Assassin with Harvest Crafting and the Necromancer without it. But the reason they don't rank higher is neither works anymore. With the change to Bladeblast Radius, it's a pale shadow of its former self. And because Bladefall Bladeblast was always a pretty clunky playstyle, I don't really have any desire to revisit this, I'm just going to let these fond memories live a little bit longer. Next up at number 4, a build that I played in Scourge League. It still works, in fact it's still amazing. Though who knows if it will be in 317. That is Strength Stacking, Accuracy Stacking, Crit, Replica Alberon's Warpath Strike Jug, which is a mouthful that I said just so I can put a bunch of confusing text on the screen, since apparently that's what you do in top 10 lists? With the new masteries, I wanted to play an Attribute Stacker. And the more I looked into it, the more I found things with the word strength that synergized with each other. You could get base damage per strength either from Brutus Lead Sprinkler or Replica Alberon's. I ended up going with Replica Alberon's route because it gave more damage than Brutus. You could also get increases to your damage by stacking strength with Iron Fortress and either Battle Mage's Cry or Crown of Eyes. If you played this on a Juggernaut, you got accuracy per strength from your Ascendancy, you could also get it from a Helmet mod, and you got attack speed per accuracy, so now by stacking strength, you got base damage, increased damage, attack speed, and accuracy. Which is pretty good. Don't worry, we can make it even better. Oscarm, and an elevated version of that Helmet mod, also gives you crit, so now you get crit cap mostly for free. 
All told, strength scaled almost every aspect of my build, since strength also ends up contributing to life, which helps to make me tankier, as I had a good bit of life gain on hit, armor, and extra max res. I also wanted a build that could delve or do sim wave 30. Naturally, I picked Molten Strike as a skill based on a theoretical POB that a friend made for a damage stacking Paradoxica based Molten Strike Jug. I then picked Lightning Strike as my second skill, and I was good to go. Ultimately, I was disappointed in Lightning Strike because I found Frostblades was far smoother. It had better single target, comparable clear, and just felt less clunky. You didn't just fail to do damage because the enemy was standing on a pebble. The most fun I had of a build, though, was the balancing aspect, tweaking the gear, making adjustments, fine-tuning everything until it was in perfect harmony. This is why this build has so many more build updates than anything else I've played in the past year. It was a lot of fun to min-max, and even without a headhunter or mageblood, it felt as strong as many of the builds I've played that did use one. Now, Expedition League was the League of Nerfs. For many people, it's considered a dark time in the history of Path of Exile. So it's only fitting that number three comes from that dark time, and it's made to crush those nerfs. That is, a pure fizz shield crush gladiator. Back in 315, I wanted a logbook farmer, because logbooks are maps, but they're just objectively more fun. I wanted something that could run almost every mod, and was tanky enough that I didn't have to be all too careful about what I was dodging. So I picked Gladiator to get Versatile Combatant, I went Fizz and Pale Crit, I had an excellent shield for it at the time, and it would have been a lot of additional effort to go Cold Conversion, but that wouldn't really have scaled my damage up by that much more. This build is the rare exception to the list that was made even stronger by the changes in 316, with the main difference being that you go Slayer instead of Gladiator. You gain Overleech and the ability to stack Frenzy and Endurance charges for even more damage and even more damage mitigation. It's stronger than before, it's easier to scale than ever from League Start, and thanks to this build I was able to live in logbooks. After all, what's a map? I could kill all of the expedition bosses, in fact I farmed several of them with very rippy mod combinations, tank hits like a champion, and even farm simulacrum or similar content. Not that I felt the need to, because let's be honest, I was living in logbooks. Out of everything on the list, this is one I can safely recommend trying for yourself. It's definitely a build that I'm going to be playing at some point in the future, I'm just not sure what form it will be or how soon. At number 2, I have a build that I made twice, and in some ways failed once. When I first played Forbidden Right in Expedition, I wasn't happy with the results, and I found a lot of that dissatisfaction was tied to the fact that it was a self-cast build. So in Scourge, I took my Mage Blood, and I decided to crank it up to 11. The end result is a nearly immortal, super smooth to clear, fast to kill bosses, cast on crit, chaos inoculation, divine shield, Aegis Aurora, Forbidden Right Occultist. In the past, I've mostly found cast on crit builds to be pretty boring. Most of them were a bunch of uniques, rely on a headhunter, and clear maps of Ice Nova. They're often too squishy for my taste and better at rushing to their death than they are at tanking endgame content. Something which, while not mandatory, I do specifically value. This version uses armor and ES scaling in combination with a mageblood and elemental flasks to be able to just laugh at the pitiful damage that the feared do with their hits, or wave 30 Kosis, or Death 600 Crystal King, who also happens to have crit and pet. The damage is more than enough to kill that Crystal King, it's more than enough to do the uber content, and you just can't beat the smoothness of the gameplay, especially when you can frost blink around with almost no cooldown. Every build on this list has good defenses. A lot of the builds on this list, like most of the builds that I make, were made defenses first, but this one is by far the tankiest. If you ever want a stress-free path to level 100, you can chill, spin your way through maps, endgame bosses, and not really pay too much attention, I can't recommend anything more strongly than this. It's a complicated build, there's a lot of moving parts, and it isn't the easiest to put together. There's nuance in things like controlling your mana recovery, modifying mana costs, using cluster jewels, crit capping your cyclone, and a lot of other little things that doesn't make it the most beginner-friendly build. However, this isn't the top 5 builds for beginning players in 2021. This is the top 5 builds that I played and I enjoyed. So I can safely say that at number 2, this is a build I'm going to be remembering for several leagues into the future, and probably my go-to whenever in the future I want to play some sort of cast on crit strike, at least assuming that the mechanics aren't nerfed into the ground in the 317 development manifesto. Now before I reveal my favorite build of 2021, I wanted to take some time for some honorable mentions. These aren't builds that I've played. They're builds I haven't played. Concepts or ideas which I think are strong, which I think are based off of good synergies, and which I might play in the future. If you're wondering what I might play in 2022, well, consider this a little preview. Starting with Elemental Hit Slayer. All ailments have been getting quite popular, especially with the new masteries and the availability of non-damaging ailment effect. So I'll probably slap on a leadership's price, 
and start blasting maps by scaling Frenzy Charges, Endurance Charges, and of course, Overleech. Right now, it might feel a little bit like the champion we have at home, but I suspect champion's going to get nerfed and Slayer will be overlooked. On the other hand, if I want to feel like Reddit and get real mad for no reason, I might play an Energy Blade Rage Vortex Bladestorm Berserker, which also might resemble a Pewee word salad, but I swear, there's a bit of a method to my madness here. This is kind of an offshoot of an attribute stacker, as it works by stacking strength and int. The reason I'm a Berserker is to get 50% more damage on skills that are exerted. And now maybe this is just the haze of battle clouding my judgment, but I see some real potential here. Finally, maybe I'll get around to playing the Mythical Winter Orb. That was one of my favorite builds from way back in Synth Lee, and it's something that I haven't touched since for fear that it won't be the same. But I've seen some very powerful variants, and with a Mage Blood, I could probably make it work. I'm not saying it's going to be cheap, I'm not going to say it's for everyone, but I could absolutely see it being a fun end of League project if in the near future we have a very mapping focused League mechanic. So finally, what is my number one favorite build for 2021? Penance Brand Inquisitor. This is something I made at a time during Ritual, where the game was about conceptualizing a build in PoE, then printing it into Path of Exile by abusing Harvest. I built this character around min-maxing explosions, using Fizz's extra, and having absurd clear speed. Though none of this stopped me from killing bosses on the build, often even before I noticed them. Normally, I don't enjoy Headhunter builds. Many Headhunter builds feel incredibly bad without the Headhunter stacks, and this was definitely an exception. The build felt great whether I was wearing the Headhunter, or whether I had a random belt with decks on it and no other useful stats. I cast two Penance Brands at once, they had exactly enough cast speed to get to 10 stacks on single target, and they jumped on activation with multi-target. They'd jump, causing an explosion, instantly killing enemies and everything around those enemies, which would then explode, killing everything around them. So a single cast could often clear two or three packs into the map. Mapping on this build was a joy, and to this day I haven't played a mapping build that's even close to the enjoyment and satisfaction of just watching two or three screens explode, and knowing when I get to the boss, it's going to explode just as easily. On top of having enough damage to obliterate 100% delirious maps, including those above tier 16, I was able to kill endgame bosses like Cirrus, Maven, and the Feared. All it would take is a couple casts of Penance Brand, and the boss would get deleted. And in most cases, if something hit me, it wasn't too big of a deal either, as I had some solid defensive layers. Unfortunately, this build doesn't work anymore. I'm not sure how you'd even make the gear without the overwhelming power of legacy harvest crafting. Maybe someday when crafting's that OP again, or when I decide to waste hundreds if not thousands of exalts, I can again conceptualize a Penance Brand build and force it into reality. And when I do, I'll probably play Penance Brand again. But until then, I'm going to enjoy the fond memories of one of my favorite builds of all time in Path of Exile. So those are the top 5 Path of Exile builds that I've played in 2021 along with a few thoughts on what I'm looking forward to in 2022, at least right now. But what are yours? What's the fastest, strongest, or most screen explodey build that you played? And what might you be looking forward to? I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. Thank you for watching. And again, a special thanks to my patrons and YouTube channel members. If you want to support me, you can do so by clicking the links down in the description below or on screen right now. You can also support by making purchases through my Nexus page. Or if you just want to chill and hang out, be sure to join the Discord. Again, links for everything are down in the description below. Thank you, and have a great day.